Masters tournament, with we're going to see who's going to be able to get some world championship points and some more money, more money playing some Hearthstone. My name is Frodan, and I'm joined in the analysis corner by Lothar from Team Nylum and Kali from Team Fnatic. How's it going, guys? What's it like being here in London, first of all? Uh, it's my first time in London. I'm mm -hmm. very excited. It's a really beautiful city. I was sightseeing yesterday, so I'm really excited to be here. But most, yet the most excitement goes from Hearthstone here. We have some many powerful players here. 16 players were ought to be here, but two didn't make it. So we have 14 players, but still super competitive environment. That's right. Caldi, uh, you're normally a player, but we're here in the analysis corner. This is the first time we have a dedicated analysis portion. We're not casting, actually, from here. Uh, this is where we get to talk about the games and be mean to the players, or yeah. not, be a little more critical of them, but also break down more of the advanced concepts. It's pretty fun. Yeah, I think it should be a lot of fun. Also, I guess, you know, finding out the good plays that maybe were missed, you know, and, sure. and, and the reason behind it. But yeah, it's been excellent. The atmosphere here is really friendly, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this event. Yeah, that's right. We have 14 players all around the world. Uh, 14 is a little bit of an interesting number. We have 16 originally, but two players couldn't have make it. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at how this weekend will actually break down. We've got 10,000 US dollars on the line and some world championship points, which is also, according to Lothar, even more important than the money. Is that right? Yeah, the honor. The, the honor. honor. It's the glory. It's, the, it's what players are playing for, as well as some good pocket change. 5,000 for first, 2,500 for second, uh, 1,250 for third and fourth. And top eight, they don't really get money, but they get some points. And at least you need two to play in the LCQs for, for the World Championship. That's so there's true. That. Definitely a nice uh, grab there. Now, keep in mind that the groups will be dual elimination, similar to how some people from Fans of StarCraft will call it GSL or WCS format. And uh, we have two players who advance from each of them into the top eight. Yeah, that's true. So two groups will be three-man groups because of the two players that didn't make mm -hmm. it. So that was uh, Pavel and Frixius from, uh, from Greece. And those players are giving out basically forfeits by default for the players in their groups. So they have easier time to advance, but it still will be a hard battle for the three players to actually make it out. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Lothar pretty much summarized it, did my job for me, but, oh, you know, just in case people uh, don't really understand, we have two groups that have three players, uh, just because two players uh, disqualified and forfeit, they couldn't make it to the event. So groups A and D have three players only, which means the chances of advancing to their group jump significantly yeah, for these players. Only so. one player is not going to advance. Uh, the first match of the day will be Firebat versus Zozos, because Zozos beat Kroba in the first match. Yeah. And then Firebat's first opponent was not able to come. So that's the winner's match. And then we'll get to decide uh, throughout the rest of the group who's going to be eliminated today. So the world champion got the win by default, so we can say that's it's right. pretty lucky. World championship right? privileges. Yeah. But not yeah. really. That's just how it conveniently <laughs> worked out. Right? Yeah. Firebat's also the reigning champion. You were here last time, Cal. They had that go. Yeah, he actually played against Saucers in the uh, in the final and uh, ended up winning 4-1. But it was really exciting. So we we're going to see the, the replay of the final now in the first match. Uh, Saucers played excellent throughout the entire tournament, but fortunately got a bit nervous in the last match. So uh, I think we'll be very excited to see him more relaxed now uh, since it's going to be the first match of the day. So I think he'll do really well. It could be an exciting match. I think also, even though there are only three players in uh, two of the groups, those two groups are incredibly stacked. So there's no, you know, I guess there's a slight benefit, but still uh, it it's not, wouldn't be easier than the other four months, you know. Uh, you know what I think? Um the free, uh, as you said, those groups are stacks, the free man, uh, free man groups, but also it's important that when you're in a position, when it's really bad to not advance from that group, the, uh, the nerves are getting wrecked so hard. And mm -hmm. most of those players are not so comfortable. Racked, not wrecked, right? Is that what you're saying? You're racking up the like the intensity builds yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And um, the problem with um, those players that they're not maybe so experience when it comes to um, playing on huge huge stages mm -hmm. so this might be a problem for them well yeah, not not for firebat or maybe yeah, of even course Zosis. Not... he's been here before yeah uh, but, but you know it's, it's like his second event <laughs> as yeah it's true as you guys saw though it's not necessarily the traditional setup that you are accustomed to uh, a lot of tabletop games you play face to face in a way or at least uh, close proximity these guys are in different isolation booths because Gfinity of course hosts lots of other great events uh, every weekend in fact tournaments for all kinds of games uh, so they're in 5v5 man isolation soundproof <laughs> yeah. booths for one guy, they're surrounded by admins. And, of course, this is in a movie theater here. Uh, Gfinity has the first dedicated esports arena in the United Kingdom. So it's really cool to even be here in the Finna Cinema. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's actually in a, a pretty nice mall. They've taken care of us really well. Uh, and we're going to take care of you guys. If you guys are looking for some good Hearthstone action, it's going to be really fun here. Uh, same thing as we've come to expect over the past couple events. Best of five conquests, as far as I know. No bans, unlike uh, some tournaments. Sea Story was experimenting so, yeah, with Yeah, Sea Story Cup was trying out the ban system, and the players were really had really mixed up feelings. Yeah. Some, for someone, uh, someone was really important to get the ban because it made the format so much complicated. But on the other hand, it feels detached from the leather experience. I've also right. heard the argument that it makes it more random, I suppose, if you can ban that class. And I remember before that we always banned Hunter, and uh, that just made all the decks, I guess, less uh, defensive, you know, because you could just mm -hmm. cut out the zombie challenge. You can you... be more greedy. Yeah, and the then that also detached it, because you had to put the zombie challenge back in for ladder. So the ladder decks and the tournament decks were really different, I suppose, so the ladder practice didn't help as much, I'd say. Yeah. That's true. That's true. All right. Well, uh, that's not going to be happening here. We're, we're having a pretty standard uh, format for you guys. Let's take a look at the schedule as well to see what the order of matches that will be happening today. We're going to start off with Firebat versus those in Group A. Then we have Life Coach versus Bunny Muffin from Group C. That's a player that uh, we were talking about maybe to keep an eye on on both yep. ends. The, the open qualified player, Buddy Muffins, which I have a lot to talk about. And then, of course, your teammate, uh, life coach, Lothar. Yeah, well, I, I will be kind of biased in this match, but I will try to be as, as not so God obvious. Not uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Group C uh, will also be staying there. We have Raynad versus Tang. Tang comes from Korea. Uh, and we know Raynad, of course. We've, we've got plenty to say about him. But <laughs> in case you guys haven't known, uh, Raynad is definitely feeling unprepared as usual for this tournament. Well, that's nothing new. Yeah, <laughs> he's been traveling a lot. His water yeah. is still wet. <laughs> he's been traveling a lot, actually. He was, I was talking to him earlier, yeah, and, and he's just been feeling exhausted for, for a long time now, yeah. coming from Germany. Yeah, plenty of eye twitching will be happening in that series. And, of course, we go straight to the winner's match. Uh, we're going to be deciding a lot of players here because it's day one. It's a two-day event here at Gfinity because uh, we're going to be wrapping up things on Sunday. But it's a pretty quick event, fast and furious. And if you can't keep up, well... We can go to the other, thankfully, other room to watch it. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's a just pretty close proximity. So lots of good stuff here. Uh, like we said, the first batch of the day will be Firebird versus Sosa. Before we go a little bit too much in that pre-match, who are some of the other players that we should be looking out for? Because there are 14 of them here. I think Life Coach will be definitely the first one. He's been dominating in the KPL. Uh, there's, there's a few others that did really well uh, before. I think I think Moe's, for example, making it to the qualifier will definitely be someone to look out for. Moe from Sweden. That's right. In fact, yeah. Sweden's actually well represented very, in this tournament. There's six, seven players here. Yeah, we, we were talking about, uh, about this uh, before we went on the broadcast, like mm -hmm. live, live broadcast, and um, it feels like Sweden has the, the fundamentals that the players uh, have to get to be to, to go into esports, like the, the, the support from, from the government, right, from right. the organizations, from their parents. It's, it, it's different. I think it, it's, it's different in Sweden and other countries. Uh, the esports there is, is basically more developed than other countries. Yeah, you know, uh, being able to have the good internet for one thing, like some, yeah. but you know, usually Hearthstone isn't in that, that important for internet, but just being able to have that access to like have that internet culture. They have DreamHack there, they have like esports, SM, and all that kind of stuff. So, really cool to see a lot of those Swedish players come through. I do know that Orange struggled a little bit yesterday. In fact, is he out of the tournament? Yeah, he's already? out. Yeah, we he's had out. some we had some tournament games yesterday just to make sure that the process is able to go through pretty speedily uh, through today. We're not going to be like jamming across different things. So, we'll keep you guys updated on scores and reports also here in the analysis corner. Uh, real quick, before we go into the first match, I know the Cassis will talk about it, but do you have any predictions for our first match, Firebat versus Zosas? I'm actually going to lean on Zosas taking it, this one, 3-2. Uh, it's going to be really close, though, I think. Okay, okay well, 3-2 for Zosas. I think we'll see a, a rematch. So from the last finals, I, I think we'll see a rematch too. That's a pretty bold prediction, though. <laughs> yeah, you, you mean the exact same result? The exact yeah. same result, so but we're in the best end, of five. Yeah. So three one for Firebat. Yeah. I'm just jabbing, man. Yeah, I, I'm gonna. I can't. I can't doubt the world champion. Uh, Firebat was telling me at Seed Story he felt a little deflated because he wasn't ever featured on the mainstream. He, oh yeah, he, that, that's he true. He loves the adrenaline. He really yeah. likes the idea that people are watching him and 
he wants to put on a show, so I'm not going to doubt it against Firebat this time around. He looks like he's in good spirits, so I my, think it's My a idea, at least, is that, you know, for Saucer, because he has a ton of information you can study on Firebat, but Firebat has almost no information except what happened last tournament, and now it's there's true. been all these new Black Rock Mountain cars, you know, and Firebat's been traveling while Saucer has been kind of having more time to practice, I suppose. So I think true. I think that may be swinging in his favor, but obviously Firebat has a lot more experience on the main stage, so nerves won't be as big of a problem, so it's going to be a really exciting match. So I, I, I think it'll be really close, this one. Yeah, you made the you made the prediction with your mind. I made it with my heart. So I'm just I, I'm I'm more of an emotional pick. I admit it. Yours makes total sense though, and that probably could be why Zosis takes the first match. So that wraps up our pre-tournament analysis. Hope you guys enjoy. We'll be back soon, so don't miss us too much. We'll definitely miss you. We're gonna give it over to Nim Shenanbo, who was ready for our first match. Thank you so much, guys. It's Nemshad Marabo, and we will be casting the games for you. We are so excited here. Firebat versus Zozos. The rematch. Oh, man. It's not just a rematch. This is a revenge match for Zozos. I can tell you, he definitely wants to take this one down right here. It's actually a pretty important match, too. I, you know, first match of the, of the tournament always kind of sets the tone for you uh, going forward. So, I mean, those guys had some good predictions over there. Actually, Caldi's is, is really interesting to me. He actually predicted he went 3 2, and kind of looking at these uh, matches they're going to place. Firebat's actually coming with Rogue, Mage, and Warlock, and Zozos. He's got Druid, Mage, and Shaman, so, um, I, you know, sort of initially, I feel like he's got his work cut out for him. Something like, um, you know, Firebat really tends to bring aggressive decks, and it looks to me like, you know, Druid and Shaman can sometimes struggle against that aggression. I'm curious exactly how he's going to be able to weather that storm. Well, on the other hand, like, last time Firebat actually won with Freeze Mage, so he was playing Freeze Mage versus Zozus, and uh, Zozus has this very interesting Shaman deck with Cult Master that uh, we've seen offline yesterday. Uh, well, I, I, I talked to Zozus a bit, and he says that right now he's really confident in his decks, and he actually won versus Crowbar yesterday. So right now, this is the, the winner's final of the, of the group. Whoever wins this will advance to top eight. Whoever loses will have to face Crowbar uh, to fight. Yeah, it's one of those three-player groups. Again, someone couldn't show up, so... And I gotta roll through it and uh, kind of go with the punches here, but yeah, it's it's um I, I think it is really unique and sort of to how these how this one's working out too. I mean, it, it is Zozus is he feeling some nerves, especially coming into this one? You know, again, this is his second time playing against Firebat. Now, is is it, does this easier for him or is it more difficult knowing that he he lost the last one and he lost it by a pretty significant one? I think it was four games to one. I uh, think like this Firebat time took it. For Zosus, it will be it will be definitely easier. Like the, the first time he was here, it was his first LAN event. He was really nervous. He wasn't sure of his decks. He was tired after the travel. And right now, you know, he's like he was in the final. He knows that he can do it. Like he defeated Amaz. He played versus Firebat. I think he also played versus Forsen, if I remember correctly. He, he went through a stack bracket pretty much. Oh, the definitely, way yeah, definitely. So it like it grows on you. Like you, you basically get gain experience, and then facing Firebat for a second time, you're actually happy that you have a chance to to fight versus the world champion and show, hey, I have this lineup, I prepared it for you, and I can actually defeat you. Well, happy to face the world champion, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe happy that he has another chance to to beat him. I don't think I'd. Me personally, I don't want to play against uh, the best players. Really? Round one. No, absolutely not. It's really thrilling, like to face the best players in the world. No and be able way. To win versus See them. now, if you're playing Druid and you get lucky the whole way through, that's great, man. I would love to play the best players. That if I have any decisions I have to make, that's when I that's when I don't want to play against the best players that are out there. Now, in truth, though, uh, Zozu's, you know, he played pretty well last time. Uh, again, I think the matchups really are what stuck him in the in the finals of that one. And, and again, I'm curious exactly how this matchup is going to work here. Because like you said, Shamadex got a Colt Master, and that's really indicative of the fact that he wants to be fighting a lot of mid range battles. And you know, same thing with Druid. Druid is it's you know it's not going to win very well unless he puts together like some Keeper of the Groves, Wrath, stuff like that against the really aggressive decks. He's looking to try to play grindy matchups. I believe he has a Harrison as well. Yeah, and Farbath is running Rogue, right? Yeah, he's got a rogue in his lineup. Again, he's Mage and Warlock, his other two classes. It really does depend on how it's built because, you know, we saw last time he had two really aggressive decks. He had Face Hunter in his matchup. And like you said, the Mage deck was, was Freeze. And yeah. Just suddenly, oh, everything's thrown for a loop now. Definitely. Is he doing that same thing again? Uh, well, I would expect Farbat doing something else, uh, but it also depends what he played at Seed Story Cup, because Farbat is a person that actually uh, mixes things around and brings different lineups depending on tournaments. But on the, other hand, on the other hand, maybe he didn't have enough time to prepare with the new decks after Seed Story Cup. Yeah. Well, I mean, all the traveling. He, he told me the other day he'd actually, he was back in the States for 19 hours before having to get back on a plane and fly right back here. But game one is about to get underway between Zozus and Firebat. Cannot wait. Let's oh man, I'm so excited. On. Let's see the new cards from BRM, the Gang Boss, and uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, like we have the new meta game right now. Yeah, Black Rock Mountain. They they actually, could, um, I'm pretty sure they could have submitted cards from this week's wing of Black Rock Mountain as well. The last one. Yeah, with Dragon Consort and um, 
I actually don't even remember what the other cards in the wing were. Uh, the new wing, they, can, they, they could submit the decks for, the we, uh, for tomorrow, I think. Like today, they, they can't play the, the new wing. Okay. But still, really exciting. Uh, so the players decided to play a fire, but it starts with the rogue, and Zozos gets his mage deck. Yeah, this is actually kind of interesting because, you know, I, this looks to me like it looks like a mech mage deck, except I see this polymorph, and then of course you see Sludge Belcher. And it, this obviously is not a mech mage deck anymore. So this is going to be some sort of tempo mage. And then within that, it's really. You know, this is a list that can change a lot of different slots in it and still be rather successful. Oh yeah, definitely. On both sides and of the board. I believe he's running counter spell as well, so he has like, lots of secrets as uh, as a tempo mage. And uh, if he curves out, he can really snowball here. You got a better glimpse of this deck yesterday. Yeah. Um, do you know all the secrets he has in here, or do you just did you you know did you see very much of the deck? I don't know all, all the secrets. I've seen counter spell, and um, there was a matchup. Tempo Mage versus Freeze Mage from Crowbar. Uh, he played Counterspell, Crowbar thought it's more entity, he played a Doomsayer, <clears throat> and then he played uh, Frost Nova into that Counterspell. So Counterspell ended oh, up wow. winning the whole <laughs> the whole game and the whole match, actually. That's cool. But right now there are no secrets, there is this Mad Scientist, which is actually good. Like, you don't want to have secrets in your hand when you get Mad Scientist on board. Uh, how do you think this matchup uh, fans out, like, for the Rogue and, and the Mage? Who is an, an Edge? Well, this is... You know, Tempo Mage again, it's, or I think, I assume it's kind of like a Tempo Mage deck. I mean, again, you see Polymorph and Unstable Portal kind of gives you an idea. Um, it's really going to depend on how this deck gets rolling because if it gets rolling in sort of like a bad position, say, for instance, it just doesn't really have much to do in the mid game, uh, you know, it doesn't draw Water Elemental or something like that, say Sludge Belchers relatively easily dealt with. Those are the kinds of moves you're looking for where I feel like the Mage is going to have a big advantage. And then, you know, something like this, 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 uh, and we do see it's Counter Spell. I mean, so, for instance, that counter spell could be so key with this. Like Mana Worm, Unstable Portalist Turn, or even Coin and a Pilot Shredder. Suddenly, both of those become so much harder to deal with because stuff like Deadly Poison and Backstab are not going to be happening. Oh yeah, that's that's really important actually. Like countering the Deadly Poison, uh, Deadly Poison might force Farbot to use the Eviscerate. Oh, oh my gosh, that's a big tree or something. or Riot. It's very interesting. Like, what do you think about the play Mana Worm instead of the Pilot Shredder? Oh, I think the I think the Mana Worm is far superior. You're saving a coin this way. You're getting the Mana Worm rolling. You're getting to use your unstable portal. Just everything <laughs> is toast. Sort of so, despite the fact the Counterspell uh, used here, Pirate still has a way to get around this. So, as I said, it's on board. Let's take out Mana Worm. But it's time uh, for the yeah, big guys. This is uh, this is not going to be an easy one to deal with. Well, I have to say that this Red card is excellent in Mage, especially with the four. <laughs> Points of mana. I mean, actually, actually Shredder. yeah, this is actually this is sort of interesting. Um, I'm guessing what his game plan is. He actually wants some damage to be invested into stuff like Pilot Shredder and Sludge Belcher, and hope that Ancient War is more of like a closeout card. Yeah, like exhaust the resources of Firebat, like using saps and stuff on the Pilot Shredder right. instead of the of the big one. Now, sort of the problem with this is, um, wow, Firebat's actually going to face here. Firebat is really aggressive with his plays. Yeah, like, most of the time. What do, you, what do you think about this? Because when he does this, he's 100% getting the egg straight. He's in four points of damage. And a ruby and egg um, outside of double mana knives or a blade flurry. That's going to kind of sit there for a while. Oh, yeah. The ruby and egg is not do, doing much. But uh, still, I like going for phase there because you do deal three points of damage and you ensure that the pilot shredder uh, is getting a minion on uh, on the player's turn. So if you would go into pilot shredder and get something with four attack, like a 4 1, yeah. you still lose your Azure trade. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about that. It certainly can backfire. Just picks up a backstab. I'm trying to assess, like, the situation here with so many taunts. And, um, it seems like Mage will be able to defend. But this Mage was really aggressive the last time we've seen it, like, with Mana Worms. Uh, Azure Drake is definitely a good card, but not right now. Uh, five ten is getting oh, dropped. look at this. He's actually going to ping his own Ruby and Egg. Wow. Yep. I've yeah. just seen, seen that card Warlock that I have like have never thought about hero and powering your own Ruby. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot better in Mage, apparently. Class. Yeah. Oh, he picks up Sap, so that's actually one of the better draws in the deck, I would say. And uh, Firebat is playing Deckhand. That's a card that's not learn. always in Rogue deck. It's, it certainly has its place. I think it's one of the better ones that's out there. I wonder if he's actually trading her. I mean, it, it, we just saw him go face. 
yeah. the situation where he had not a great trade, but a relatively valuable one. And so in this spot, does he want to protect his Violet Teacher? I think it does. Yeah, because if he protects his Violet Teacher in this spot, he's also, um, you know, he's he's also giving his opponent two extra mana because Sozos would be committed to using that hero power there, which means he's not going to play the Ancient of War again. So when he does it this way, does he actually want his opponent to play Ancient of War? And is he using the South Sea Deckhand again to try to grab that two mana back? Oh, definitely. Um, right now, like, um, Firebat just wants to get with the board. I think he, he doesn't uh, have to be afraid of uh, Flame Strike or Blizzard. Or I'm actually really surprised that he played the South Sea Deckhand here. Because, you know, he's got to think about Mirror Entity. He has a Tinker Sharpshooter one in his hand that he would want to activate. Obviously, you want to get the combo with it, but not. That's, that's really curious to me. No, oh my gosh. Normally, you could think about like getting the deck, deck hand and uh, activating the combos for the Tinker Sharks Oil. But yeah. he has that Eviscerate, even though Eviscerate is like only two points of, points of mana. All right, so here for Firebat, like you won't, are you committed to go for face now or do you keep trading? Like if Firebat keeps trading, it will be. Yeah, I mean, this is a good question. I mean, this is part of the reason why I would have liked to see him save uh, the Tinker Sharp Sword on the spot. Because now in order to activate, he's got to use an Eviscerate. Like if he, if he wants to use this. And if the Eviscerate, is that, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine it not being one to this, but he loses his combo in this way. He doesn't get his combo activated. I mean, granted, Eviscerate had he done it this way, Oh gosh, and now does he trade here? And then if he, he's giving up a really easy yeah. target on his Even if Tinker he, Sharp Sword if Oil. If he buffs, like, whatever he buffs, it's actually going to die to the hero power. Yeah, and seems, then, I mean, this has just been like a successful grind, I think, for Moses. He just, he's had so much stuff, and he's still got this Ancient War in his hand. You know, Fire Red, he's got to even save the dagger here in hopes to draw something like a big blade flurry. He yeah. needs to draw Sprint. The last time we, we seen Fire Red in this situation, I think it was in the final, he actually top deck Sprint. Do you think Spr oh, 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 my gosh. It. <laughs> yes, that, that's how you actually win this matchup. You eat cards. It's almost like you, you like found your center and focused your chi, and you're like, you know what? I'm Nimsh, and he's going to draw Sprint. And it's like, I'm Nimsh, <laughs> and this is Firebat, the world champion, and this is how you win. That is... I mean, there's no Blade Flurry I'm yet, though. There's yeah. no Blade Flurry yet. Yeah, so, he didn't get I mean, it. He's still got to draw. Yeah, but still, this is much better than it was before. Oh, with, yeah. Like, just fun of knives. And, uh, <laughs> the Tinker <laughs> Sharp Sword Oil. <laughs> He just, he draws like a, I don't know, what's a word, what would be the worst draw in his deck right now? Like, what would be the actual, like a second South Sea deckhand would be like the worst draw in there? Possibly. But no, nobody plays uh, two of them. I wonder if he plays uh, Dr. Boom and Torison. Like, I've seen uh, yesterday, I think Powder and Orange, they were running Torison and Dr. Boom and those, uh, and the Rogues. Yeah, it's, you know, it's really interesting that you mentioned that. Um, Like, how many slots do you have to fit? Like, I don't understand where those would fit in. And when he's got South Sea Deccan in here, and you also see Lothab, I mean, this is this has also been a trim that I've seen kind of common on on some ladder decks. Like, where where does the Emperor and the Doctor Boom fit in? Like, are they I cutting a sprint? Are they? No, they are cutting. Like, it's actually it's funny because they play double sprint still because Story Sun actually has a synergy with sprints and Doom. Uh, I think they are cutting Violet Shredders, and then they are just running double Violet Teacher, and uh, maybe Edwin. Like, the the deck is a bit different. Look at this turn. He's got a six-point dagger sitting there. Yeah, doing nothing. When still. you're in Zozu's spot here, like, how worried are you about Blade Flurry? And you're just like, you're like, oh god, please don't, please don't have it, please don't have well, it. Well, definitely, <laughs> definitely worried. How nervous are you in that seat? You want your own board, and right now Farbat might be forced to attack into one of the Drakes to like mitigate some damage. I mean, like, this is 12 damage he's looking at. Yeah, like, do you kill the, the do you kill a Drake? It is spell damage, so the Fireball or like Frostbolt is going to deal a lot more. But then again, you are... How many cards are left in his deck? Like, how many times have I said like he needs Blade Flurry? Like the Rogue needs Blade Flurry now to win this match. Uh, I mean, that seems like a very key thing in pretty much every single one of these decks is Blade Flurry just always needs to be there. Yeah, this is, uh, this is looking really bad for Firebat right now. Well, he still has the the far suit. He still has Lothar, but he doesn't have any taunts. Yeah, the There's issue. The flame strike, by the way. Yeah, the the big issue here is going to be not only is it like there's no efficient way to deal with these four twos right now, and he's also going to have to face down. Well, now it's going to be duplicate. I mean, he had the option for Ancient War here, but I actually really like this duplicate 
um, because everything here becomes so inconvenient to kill, and Firebat has made it pretty apparent that you actually can't kill your stuff. So you don't really need to commit anything to a position like this. Also, it's successful. important that if there is a Blade Flurry, the first minion to die will be the first minion that was played, right? So like Duplicate will actually Yeah, if everything dies at the same time, whatever was in play... So Azure Drake is getting nice. Duplicate. Right. Yeah. A pretty smart play by Zozus. Uh, Farbat trying to stay alive, getting back to 16. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to get Flamestruck this turn. That's I think that's really important. Well, Firebat is not that yet. Even like if there is, wait, this is eight, ten. If there is a fireball damage. top deck, it's actually over. Even with Lothab. Wow, look at that. Oh god. Yeah, he has to suck that. That is so brutal. How many times have you ever sapped a four-two Azure Drake? I think it's, <laughs> it's gonna be like the worst feeling sap. I've seen, I've seen the worse world. saps. I've seen people sapping a Lepernome, and uh, that was painful for sure as well. But yeah, Firebat in a weird spot. I think like. Zozo's knowing the double step is out of the way. He can just play this Druid now. Engine of War. It's a 510. And you know what? Like, even though Firebat didn't get the Blade Flurry, if he gets the Blade Flurry next turn, or if he gets a, an hour sprint and gets Blade Flurry out, out of it. Yeah, I mean, a Blade Flurry would just be insane. I mean, he has Tinker Sharp Sword on his hand, so you're looking at a nine point Blade Flurry if he draws that. It's so crazy. Like, this game is super close still. Whoa. So, Zoza is thinking about the play. How are you enjoying London? Oh, it's been great so far, actually. I, yeah, I'm surprised how well I remember my way around. You know, I, I directions and names and birthdays are like always something I can never remember. It's really cool but, that there are English signs, right? Like, whenever you go, you can actually talk English. Well, and that's, everybody that, understands that's normal you. for me. I mean, Oh, yeah. You know, I don't. I don't like go to the, like grocery store in Texas and like a guy speaks French. Only. Dude, I'm so envious. Like in <laughs> Poland, I, I I I walk around, I talk English to people, and they don't know what I'm talking about. So I have to switch to Polish. Oh, you talk English to me. I don't know what you're talking about half the time. He's gonna hurry up here. It looks like Emperor. Um, you know, it's pretty tough to disagree with Emperor. He's not really under a big threat of lethal. He's actually even gonna favor clearing here, so he's hedging his bets against a top deck blade flurry. It's, it's pretty obvious it's not there. But he's also got the duplicate down still too. So Firebat, even if he kills this stuff, it's still he's got a difficult time dealing um, with just the duplicated things. Because again, he's invested so much damage into all these other minions. How does he actually deal with this Ancient of War once it hits the board? Because look at this turn ten. Look what Emperor has done to this. He's got Ancient War and Azure Drake next turn, or even Azure Drake and Flame Strike. So he's going to be able to handle pretty much any amount of pressure that's thrown at him. And at the same time, he's kind of deflecting attacks that that Rogue will typically hey, have, which is blow up all your minions, then get a big board and try to kill you. On the other hand, the Duplicate is, is going to work on an... Oh, is he actually going to kill Torisan? What would you rather see duplicated here as, as Firebat? Would you like to give double Torisan? Or did he check for for another counter spell? Well, I mean, it's obviously not Mirror Insti. It's gotta be Duplicate. I think he wants him to have Torisans in his hand, honestly. Like, I think he wants his hand to be cluttered, so that way yeah, he has time to try to actually beat what's going on here. Oh man, this Azure Dre uh, this this Mana Worm is going oh to my kill. Gosh. This is just, I mean, just the Flame Strike's going to kill everything. It's yeah, Flame Strike is actually killing too. everything. That's so sick. Wow. That's Torison. That's the power of Torison that's actually warping the game a bit. Like, it's warping the concepts. Because normally you would think, like, hey, Flame Strike, seven mana. Anti -kill, but Nothing where else. are these Blade Flurry? Is that, is that six cards left in this deck? <laughs> he still doesn't draw a Blade Flurry. Is he only running one, maybe? Is there a possibility? Yeah, I don't think so. I think he's running two. Like, sometimes it happens that the, the cards are stacked on the bottom of your deck. You can't do anything with it. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you he's got five cards left and he still hasn't seen a Blade Flurry. Well, Farbad needs another sprint or a blade flurry. This this weapon is just sitting there doing nothing for so many turns already. And yeah, Zozo's full that's, hand. That's also a good point too. Is that it's that's actually been kind of a liability this weapon sitting there because he hasn't been getting able to get his hero power. And granted, that's only a few points of damage, but you know, four or five points of damage over the course of the game. That's like an that's an entire fireball. It when matters. You're otherwise, not doing anything basically. Well, Farbat is on the brink of the of defeat here with the Fireball for two mana. I think he's honestly like I don't even think he would mind seeing something sprint here. And he's got Emperor. That's a blank. I blade flurry. think that's actually it. Like he has to kill one of those minions. Oh, and then yeah, it's seven, just... and Fireball is six, seven hero power. Zos is going to take game number one versus Farbat with his mage versus Rogue, locking his mage because we are playing Conquest here. Yeah. So, uh, honestly, this is this is actually, I think, one of the matchups that Zozo's was looking for. 
Um, I would tend to say that this kind of mage deck is going to do pretty well versus Rogue. Um, and then you couple that with the fact that maybe Firebat didn't find the cards he was looking for. And there you have it. That's game one. So Zozu's got to be feeling good after picking yeah. up the first one. Revenge time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Uh, look, that, that was looking incredible. And uh, I'm really curious uh, why Firebat brought Rogue. Like, I, I know he plays a lot of Rogue, but still, uh, we've seen a lot of Rogues in this tournament. Like Orange played a lot of Rogue, Powder yeah. played a Rogue. And, uh, well, you know, seeing Orange and, and Firebat play Rogue, it's not going to be like too uncommon. It, Rogue is, you know, we were asking some of the open qualifiers here of what their favorite classes were, and it was just almost every single time it was Rogue. I feel yeah. like the best of Rogue. I definitely want to play Rogue. Everybody uh, loves Rogue. And then, Rogue. of course, you know, those guys being on the same team. Than playing rogue, it's not, I was mostly thinking it's because Valyra has like such a nice art, and like <laughs> when I'm asking people like what's your favorite class, and they go through the the portraits, they're like, Garrosh, no, like he's he's ugly. Like then you know, that's mean. Malfurion. I don't think I don't think Garrosh is very ugly. I think I think he's I think he's a handsome, outstanding gentleman. That's what I think. Really? I think you're being rude. But yeah, <laughs> Roga. Uh, All right, stay so with Garrosh. I'm taking <laughs> Valyra and. Uh, <laughs> I may be getting the short end of the stick there. Um, yeah, so uh, his, his mage is going to be locked, of course. Like you said, this is Conquest. So yeah. uh, Now it's Rogue, Mage, and Warlock for Firebat versus Druid and Shaman for Zozo. So which one of these matchups do you think that he wants to get most? Uh, he has to get a win with Druid, and Druid versus Rogue is really tricky. Um, Druid versus Warlock is, depending on a Warlock, I, I would say Firebat is going to bring Zoo. Like Firebat is a player that really likes aggro decks and he excels at playing Zoo. He was trying different Zoo builds before, like after GVG. It didn't really work, but right now with, with Gang Boss, that's a possibility. Yeah, we've kind of seen a resurgence of Zoo. Um, I noticed in the latter of the past couple of days, it was, you know, I, I hadn't played against a Zoo deck in almost two months. And then suddenly it was every single Warlock deck I played was a Zoo deck. And I was kind of like, what's going on here? And kind of, you know, started watching some streams, checking out what's going on, and I started seeing, like, this double sea giant zoo deck yeah, floating around. Play. And I was like, what on earth is going on? And it is no joke, man. Getting Imp Gang Boss and following, like, with, like, Implosion Sea Giant, that's, like, a, a real thing that happens. Yeah. and It's uh, definitely possible. And I think, like, there is also room for improvement in the deck. Uh, people just need to experiment with it. Maybe, you know, bringing Void Colors and Mulganis also, because there, you, you have a lot of demons. Yeah, that's the other thing that's really cool about Zoo right now, too, is that you have a couple different options with it. Like, you can play this really, really aggressive route where you're trying to just outright kill your opponent as fast as you possibly can. But then you also have, like, these slower value routes where you can utilize Voidcaller to really give you an edge in this minion trading battle. Because that's something that Zoo does very well, is trade early to mid-game minions. And as it starts going to late, what it's hoped to have done by that point is have enough board that you can just kind of push for a win and your opponent doesn't have a way to, to efficiently stabilize through it. But something like Void Color really gives you a big edge in a situation like that. So yeah, I would agree with you. I, I think that Druid here, um, he's got to get a win with it. So, you know, being up a game might be his most comfortable position to like, okay, well, I can, I can take a... A, a little bit of a, of a bad matchup, and hopefully that it comes through with me. Because yeah. again, you know, he's got to win with one of, with all three of them. Uh, I, I would like to see his druid here, and sort of akin to the way that Conquest always seems to be the person who lost, just queues up the deck that they just lost with again. But game two is getting underway here, and you know, oh, this is the shaman deck. Yeah, shaman is that's actually in, in Zoza's lineup. So um, these these are a little bit flipped around. We'll get that fixed as quick yeah, as possible. Yes, so Zoza is going to play the shaman versus Far about rogue. Farbat just trusting, and he, he needs a win with Rogue. Like, there's yeah. no point in changing it right now. This is a really clunky opening hand for Sozu's too. That Mana Tide Totem makes this a little bit better, I would say. But, you know, having Big Game Hunter and Neptalon in your opening hand, these are two cards that are really not going to be very good versus Rogue. This is a matchup, though, that typically, I would say, is, is pretty good for Rogue in general. Well, yesterday we've seen a situation where... Um, LB Dutch Boy actually thought the same thing. Like, I have this Big Game Hunter versus Rogue, I'm never going to use it. So he played um, Big Game Hunter and then Powder, and his Rogue responded with Dr. Boom, and he was like, well played. Oh. So, <laughs> everything can happen. We haven't seen Dr. Boom for Firebat, and I don't think he's playing one because he had the deck hand, so he has the more, more, like the faster version of the Rogue. But then for Zozo's here, you know, Feral Spirit on turn two. Yeah, this is actually a little interesting because he's not going to be able to follow with a Totem. And obviously it's locking his turn three, so when he makes his play, he's pretty heavily committed to turn four Pilot Shredder, but I don't think this is, there's a problem with this. Um, you know, if he doesn't... You know, does, how is Spyro going to clear this? Does he want to just dagger? If he if he uses dagger and deadly poison, it means he's not getting a minion on the board. 
Um, if he's got something like Backstab SI7 Agent, you really almost never have a way to play around that efficiently, so you kind of just got to throw caution in the wind of that. Um, but if he does something, this is kind of the turn I think he's actually looking for, is in, this, in one of his worst case scenarios, which is Deadly Poison, he's denying his opponent the ability to play a three jump. I mean, say Firebatch doesn't have one, but I think in, in Zozo's mind, this is a minor victory. Yeah, I think it's like a win-win situation for Zozo's. Like, he plays the first bird. If there is no Deadly Poison, it's the great situation for him. If, even if there is the Deadly Poison, as you said, uh, he knows that one Deadly Poison goes away. But we can see that Firebat actually has uh, another one. He has a lot of spells. Like, Firebat is missing minions. And minions yeah. are really important at the beginning of the game uh, for the Rogue to I was just out of the image. I was just about to mention, we noticed that he's a very distinct lack of, of things to put on the board in this game. So just gonna go Deadly Poison again, and I can't blame him. And this damage is gonna start adding up, and the oh, longer man. this kind of situation goes on, the more likely it is that I think Zozus gets himself into a winning position because time is what he needs. He needs to be able to get to these Neptalon turns really cleanly. He needs to get some value out of this Mana Type Totem. Uh, you know, again, just the longer that this goes on, I think the better it is for Zozus. It, to a certain point, of course. You know, if, if everything he has gets dealt with, obviously he's going to be looking kind of some. There's a Violet Teacher Firebat. Hey, it's I'm really important. Class. Like he, he was also running out of the draw. Like he only had the fun of knives. But now with Violet Teacher, he can actually unleash some board. And um, Zos doesn't have the Lightning Storm. I'm not sure if he's playing one, actually. I'd be very surprised here if there was no preparation. Wow, it's actually not preparation. All right, so, I mean, he obviously values the Pain of Knives in combination with like Azure Drake to be able to sweep out a bunch of totems. Not a huge surprise there, but Violet Teacher is going to get... Preparation might be with. also not played because of uh, possible sprint. Like, he might feel like he is behind so much right now that he needs yeah. to top the sprint and then preparation. He's also hedging his bets versus something like Lightning Storm. He doesn't want to overcommit to his board. Oh, yeah. And then have nothing left if that happens post-Lightning Storm. Well, he's seen uh, Zozo's play yesterday, so he knows more or less what's uh, in Zozo's deck. Well, preparation is going to get used here instead, so Tinker Sharp Sword will okay. play. Oh, look at that battle frog. I see. That guy is serious. Well, <laughs> whenever the, there is a mana die, do you have to kill it? <laughs> Can you, uh, I, just, I don't want to make a comparison here for you. Do you quick. SI7 agent, a deadly trained assassin, has three power. That frog has three power right now. How big do you think that guy is in real life? That's a, a, a really big frog. <laughs> Four murlocs. What are the, what are the murlocs? Are gonna, that, is that Cold Light Seer? Is that what that guy's name is? That's the plus two health Murloc, right? Yes. Wow, Neptalon getting set. That's got to feel awful, by the way. You just paid, was it three overload plus seven mana? For a card that's getting destroyed for two. Yeah. <laughs> All right, like, Warrior can destroy the card for one with next Okay. Execute. This this game got really ugly really fast. Well, at least there is a Lightning Storm for Zozo, so he has some options. And uh, Farbad is also running out of cards. But then Zozo is only at 11. Oh, the that frog is doing the work. That was a dangerous crackle, actually. Imagine if that had rolled three. I don't think he had a choice, actually. So four points of damage. That looks like five. That looks like lethal to me. Four, six. Yeah, that's how you do it. Wow. Uh, isn't he one off? That game turned around. No, no, no. He's got SI7 agent. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. South Sea Deck and SI7 agent. I just saw two damage and I'm like, broke two damage, SI7 agent. Yeah, so 1-1 one, yeah, one in games that here. That looks like SI7 a bit, right? <laughs> Especially with that long flowing hair and that red bandana tied over his face. The white shirt. Indicating that he's a criminal. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's Shaman versus Rogue in a nutshell. Even despite the fact that Firebat opened up pretty poorly with that one, it really doesn't take a lot to get a very big edge in the mid game. He was able to counter the plays, basically. And um, just Rogue has so many clears, like Fan of Knives. He didn't get the, the Flurry again, so maybe he's actually not running one. That's, you know, that I would I would venture to say it's almost impossible for him to not be running a Blade Flurry. At least but, one. Yeah, but one Blade Flurry, you know, again, he got down to four cards in his deck in the very first game. We still hadn't seen one yet. So unless there was two tucked into those bottom four cards, he's probably only running one. Yeah. And or he's really unlucky with the Blade Flurry. Because where, where do you, again, where do you trim cards? You know, he's got Emperor in here. He's still got Lothab. He's got a South Sea Deckhand. And Emperor... No boom. Yeah, no we haven't seen Dr. Boom yet. W was there an Emperor? Well, there was an Emperor, yeah, we actually. Have, yeah, we did we've see seen, Emperor. We've seen Emperor. Like, you have to cut a card for the old solid fit. I feel like Hearthstone's like one of the first games like, I've ever played in a card game where I would run more than the maximum amount simply so that way I had extra options available to me. You can't do that in Hearthstone. You have to make a cut per card you're playing. 
So did he cut a Blade Flurry to kind of fit a list up? Well, he could cut like one Farce here, uh, no running kill bots. So definitely, uh, he, he had a lot of options. But then... Oh, he did have a Farce here. He, he had one. Yeah, he, he had, had one Farce here and, and he had one heal bot. Because we saw a heal bot game. Oh, yeah, actually. Whoa. Yeah, that's Maybe what I mean. It's Firebat is officially playing a 40 cards rogue <laughs> deck. But the, we won't see the deck. Like, this deck is now locked. So Firebat is down to his Warlock and... Yeah. And Druid? Warlock and Mage for Warlock Firebat Mage. versus uh, Druid and Druid. Shaman for Zozus here. And so now Momentum kind of back in Firebat's corner, you know, tied this game up. It's looking like he's the one where it's like the... I, don't, I, don't, I feel like whoever won it has more pressure on picking the right deck. Oh, man, that's the zoo for Firebat. Oh, my gosh. And look, power that power opening hand is not good. So much power. Well, so much power, oh yes, God. but so much liability also. And look at Zozu's hand. This is exactly the kind of hand you're looking for. You might want an Innervate, but then you do have this anti-aggro hand. You, you're definitely... Oh, happy. yeah. He's going to be thrilled when he sees this turn one play. He's got Hero Power on turn two and three, which is totally fine. He's got Keeper on turn four and five, and then he's got Force of Nature to clean up the rest of the board that's been missing. Look at that. Just instantaneously starts chipping away. And our good four drop. So this will be the battle of the War of Attrition, kind of. Like, Druid will try to uh, trim the board, and uh, Warlock will try to, like, set up the board. Look at this. He's actually going to power Overwhelming to protect this Flame Imp. That makes sense, actually. Wow. So unless those was actually top decks a coin, or an Innervate. Oh, it's... Swipe is actually... This Not is some card. lightning fast play, by the way. These these guys are wasting no time. Well, he didn't have a play, so like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even to consider attacking the flame with your hero power, though. You did just draw swipe. Uh, I think like just using the keeper here. Is this is good. looking really grim for Firebat. That's why I would not attack the the flame with the shapeshift because you know you do play the the keeper. Put this apple on your head. Oh man. Um, I'm curious why that dog is placed in that position. Ah, because he wants to buff the imps. That's why he placed it here. Okay, so this was... This wasn't like a misplacement. He wants the imps to be the one getting buffed because they're the ones that are going to be getting hero down, hero power down first. Those are the ones he would obviously rather attack into minions first as well. Actually makes sense. Uh, for Zozo's now, I think just keep her the, the juggler. You want to limit the damage. Oh, that seems like totally the play to me. And the next turn, he will be able to swipe in hero power. Oh, okay, so Doomguard. yeah, Doomguard getting drawn here is actually pretty interesting because both of these cards in Firebat's hand, I'm guessing he's not too thrilled to see right now. I think you can definitely play the Doomguard right now. Like, if you don't play the Doomguard, you top first, uh, but then if you end up with something... Like, that, you can get the second Doomguard, and that that's will be bad. Th that's exactly the thing, too, is if he starts tapping now, he's delaying the amount of... He starts delaying when this Doomguard ends up getting value. But is that worth it at this point? If he's going to attack this end... So what did Farbat see? Like he knows that this is not the Taunt Druid, right? Or did he see only like two generic Druid cards? Yeah, he's gonna go for Doomguard. I can't blame him here either. Like with Power Overwhelming and Iron Beak Owl in your hand, I think you just kind of throw caution to the wind and be like, you know what? These are not gonna get the job done. I need this six extra damage right now. I need the pressure this is gonna add because this Doomguard's not getting dealt with this turn. It's sticking to the board. So now he's getting he's getting at least eleven damage out of his Doomguard so far. So unless he could have turned Iron Beak Owl and Power Overwhelming into six extra damage, I think that this is the right play. And so, that was definitely a yeah, correct play here. Plus, he, he starts investing into his life taps moving forward here. This is the more yeah. I think about it, the, the more clear it is. That this is that's that's the do. thing. Like you just uh, set up the board and uh, and you have the tempo advantage here. Oh, the Force of Nature is getting used to clear the dog and an aim, and set up a swipe for next turn maybe. Um, well. You yeah, I think he's going to just put both of the two set up to swipe next turn, so it's a bit of an investment he has to make, but he, cer he saves himself four points of health this way. And, uh, I certainly don't think he wanted to see Imp Gang boss hit the board. Well, you know, it's not like you want to see anything specific here. A second Doomguard will be much more <laughs> devastating. Savager is a blank for now, so Zozo's still trying to defend himself. Gosh, Imp Gang boss is really good. This guy's doing some work this game. So this decides to... What do you think about, like, swiping the, the gang boss? Well, terrible, because you don't kill the... Oh, my gosh. That Defender of Argus is actually a really huge draw right now. My it's protecting the gang boss. Argus. It's protecting the gang boss. It's keeping the imp out of hero power range. It's making this egg become active. Both Keeper of the Groves have been used. 
I think this game is not over, but I think it's over actually because the Druid will have a he's lot got, of he, trouble. Yeah, where how does he recover from this spot? I mean, every step of the way he's starting to fall behind. He's down to nine life. Also, he used double keeper of the Grove. He used his swipe. Um, he used one of his cards a turn. I mean, this is this is dire straits. It's very difficult now. Shade of Naxxramas, not really doing much. Uh, if you play Druid of the Claw as a taunt, this board is not going to kill the Druid of the Claw. So oh, that, that, that's actually an interesting point because both the Power Overwhelmings have been used. And I'm curious how close attention Zozus was paying to those Doomguard discards. Like, does he remember that Iron Beak Owl and that Power Overwhelming got ditched to those? And I think if you remember that, this Druid of the Claw would be much more clear to him. Yeah, but on the other hand, he has to decide if he wants to Wild Growth or Hero Power. I'd... Well, well Wild Growth in here is not the most exciting play. <laughs> yeah, it does allow you to play Sylvanas Pilot Shard next turn I if you go with Drew the Claw. This is, I'm certain this is what he was thinking about is whether he wanted to play Drew the Claw or Sylvanas. And so this kind of indicates also that he has been paying attention to it because this is a risk that he's willing to take at this point and say, you know what, I've seen two Power Overwhelmings, I've seen an Iron Beak Owl, I'm okay to play this Sylvanas' turn. He knows that there is not enough burst. Four but on the other hand... That's seven points right there. Yeah, and Implosion also, uh, you know, imploding the, the Shade of Naxxramas, yeah, getting your board bigger. Just get extra stuff. You know, it's funny. I think he actually wants to roll a three there. Yeah, because uh, with four... <laughs> but, uh, what, what happens if he rolls four? And why not play it in a different order? Um, I think if he rolls four, he's just okay with holding on to the Abusive Sergeant for an extra turn. Um, so yeah, I actually am not seeing a way to get out of this. Yep. Yeah. Well, not really a good way. Like, even if you steal a minion here. Ras let's say you Rasex for three, run Sylvanas into the 5-5, five five, or into the 4-4, four four, plays Druid of the Claw and Taunt, and then Hero Powers. Six points of damage could sell to Druid of the Claw, and then three points of damage could sell to you. So you live at one that way. Well, so that's the way to survive for one more turn. Can you make a comeback then? Yeah, that's the other thing too. Is actually, you actually have to find a way to win after that too. You know, alternatively, if he rasps into swipe. All right, so he's wrapping the gangbus to stop the imps from being. Produced. Oh, he could black knight that Nerubian egg and make a four-four. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> The problem is for him that he can't kill his own Sylvanas. Like, even if he does, he might st steal an Imp. Wait, this is lethal for him, right? Uh, yeah, this oh, is no certain one. death. Yep, so Zozo's just going to give this game up. And wow, even after the double power of the start, and again, sort of the nature of the matchups here, you know. this I mean, this is such a bad matchup for Druid. Even with two Keepers of the Grove and with the swipe, it was just enough resilience for Warlock to get the job done. He I mean, Doomguard, again, it was just so much damage that Zozus had to invest in trying to kill these Doomguards, and he's unable to overcome the fact that Firebat's able to draw two cards a turn. That's the mastery of the of the Zudek, because Zudek is playing two cards at a time, and it's really like asking you a lot of questions. Do you have removal for this? And uh, it seemed like Keepers are cool, but on the other hand, he did shapeshift on two, he did shapeshift on three. Yeah. So uh, if you have an Innervate to, to set up an early board position, or a Wild Grove to like play Keeper on three, and then maybe Druid of the Claw on four, uh, then he might be able to stop the Zoo. But then here we've seen a classical example where Zoo is just playing those minions, and uh, you, and then after you emptying his hand, he's just like tapping, so like two cards of return yeah. without any drawback. Really surprised that actually power overwhelming on, on the imp to kill a two two zombie really child worked. was that actually really such an important play to that game. That's really funny to go back and look at that. Sort of you know you're like oh Zeus mindless, so nobody has to think. Well, you got to think sometimes. That play is sir. I I would have been hard pressed, I think, to make a play like that. So right now, Firebat is down to his mage. He only needs to win with yeah. his mage. We don't know which mage is that. This is the... Uh, at C3 Cup, I think he played a really weird mage build that actually lost, um, lost him the series versus Savitz. He got all freed with that mage. Here, uh, maybe he improved it. Maybe he brought a freeze mage again. Maybe he's running a, a mech mage, which a lot of uh, pro players also favor. And for Zosus, uh, he still needs to get a win with that druid, and he still needs to get a win with that shaman deck. Uh, it's really hard to say how they fare uh, against a mage that we don't know what it is. Yeah, a lot of this mage deck also, de it, it really kind of depends on how he's going to end up getting it built. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to wait and see what's going on. We're actually going to go to a quick commercial break. So, guys, hang tight. Game four of Zozus and Firebats coming right up. Firebats on match point. Zozus got some work to do. Come back. 
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are here, Nimsh Admirable. Zozus versus Firebats. Zozus level with his mage. He needs this one win to get the series and advance to top eight. Zozus needs two wins. He has Shaman and a Druid. And those decks are not that good versus mage. Yeah, I, I would, you know, we kind of, I kind of made a joke on the break that maybe you might be able to use the deck help builder thing, and put together a mage deck. <laughs> you might be able to beat some druid and shaman decks. Uh, but in truth, this, this is, um, you know, it's looking like a really tough spot for him. I'm guessing he probably, you know, I, I, I just, I don't. It's so difficult to imagine him like really winning this match at this point. Again, just his druid deck is going to line up so poorly for so many different kinds of mages. Unless, of course, it's a freeze mage, which really, I mean, that cracks the whole thing wide open again. But just kind of seeing what we've seen, though, uh, we were talking about how this mage deck is going to be built based on whether or not I feel like Firebat wanted to be weak versus warrior, strong versus warrior. And if this is a freeze mage, a freeze mage in his lineup, he's going to have warrior, I'm rogue and freeze mage, so he has two like really, really poor matchups against warrior. And it seems like a deck that you would anticipate being kind of strong coming into this event. For just, you know, it seems like it's good to me. It's got two different dynamics right now. You have the Grim Patron way to go, and you have like a traditional Control Warrior. So I think it's definitely a strong deck in both those regards. So this being Freeze Mage, if it is Freeze Mage, he's like, you know what, it's okay I'm, that I'm weak to Warrior. If it's Mech Mage, it's like he obviously wants to be strong against Warrior. Um, and it makes a lot of sense. So if this but is then, Freeze Mage, I think it, it's really, I think it's so much better for Zozi's thing because Druid is just going to line up so well against that. But if it's not, looking rough. Well, uh, with Freeze Mage, like the the thing you, you said, it, it's, it will be bad versus Warrior. Like his lineup will be bad versus Warrior, but Warrior is just one deck. So like if Warrior wins one game, one game, then you're good with the rest of your decks. If this is a Mech Mage, uh, then he, his lineup will be uh, bad versus Anti-Aggro. Yeah. And we can see it's a Freeze Mage. So Firebat is bringing the same deck that he brought. Well, maybe not exactly the same deck, but basically the same sure. Mage setup. Yeah, Freeze Mage twice in a row. He actually kept Alex Straza in his opening game too. Which is really interesting. And look at that. Lothev right away for Zozu's. One of the best cards in the deck versus Freeze Mage. Well, but on the other hand, you, you kind of want to keep Lothev for Alex Straza. Like, it, it is important later. So if you play it early. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't expect him to play it early. I just, that's such an important card to have. And look at that. A pilot of Shredder. One of the best cards he could pick up right here on turn four. Keeper of the Grove might have been a little bit better. But I think he's pretty happy with this one. Well, at least we know that Harrison Johnson is not going to do much in this matchup. <laughs> So, what is this matchup about? Like, Freeze Mage obviously wants to get the combo parts. They want to set up a nice block, play Alex Straza, and then burst their opponents. And how is how can Druid win it? How can Druid win this matchup? Pressure is the name of the game for Druid. As, as long as they can get consistent pressure out on the field, that's when it ends up mattering. This is actually a very common attack that I see is people you know, kind of running these pilot shredders into Acolyte's Pain. And Frank, I don't really like it that much, honestly. I think I would tend to favor the four extra damage. Let my opponent go ahead and attack. Cause let, let's say what's going to happen on this? He's going to ping his acolyte and run it in. I'm okay with that. It, he's already got a ton of cards in his hand anyway. You're not really fighting a card advantage battle. You're just trying to get pressure out, and then you're trying to like hit a lotheb at the correct timing. If you get a well-timed lotheb, it's so difficult for these to be you. But on the other hand, you know, it's that uh, these mage really needs the cards, and we can see right now Farbat doesn't have any card draw, so he's he's dependent on what he gets. He doesn't have that many cards in his hand as well. Uh, so if, if Zozo is able to pressure now after losing that games. 4 points of damage, the quality of plays from Firebat might not be uh, that great. Yeah, so looking for a couple different draws here. Oh, Fireball's actually a good one. He can play Doomsayer and he can the Fireball the Sylvanas and that's going to 100% steal the Doomsayer and make it, make it happen. And look at that. Oh man, the plays from the World Champion giving... <laughs> he gives and takes. Firebat gives the Doomsayer and then takes the whole board. Aww. <laughs> oh my gosh. Being a Doomsayer has to just be in such an awful life. Oh, he knew it! Like, he, when he signed for it. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, who grew up was like, you know what, I want to be a Doomsayer when I grow up. Nobody, I guess. But then somebody has to, to spread, you know, the Doom. So and say like, hey, Doom is happening, yo. Everything's yeah. <laughs> going to explode. He's like, yo, man, end's coming. Y'all need to watch out for it. The world ends. But then again, like, right now with Doomsayer being handed over, like, with Sylvanas and with Mirror Entities also, like, you know, hey, you want a Doomsayer? Everybody can have a Doomsayer. <laughs> Just giving him out. All right. Being a Doomsayer and a pilot and Shredder has to be, like, one of the worst feelings in the world. You know, as soon as your mech stalls, like, the end of the world is about to happen. Well, at least Pilot and Shredder is standing there for a couple more turns, and Doomsayer is just going to meet his doom right now. Meet the wrath. No doom is happening. 
Nice block set. Black Knight, it's, he's got Harrison and Black Knight in this deck. That's actually really interesting to me because Black Knight is pretty much just falling out of favor in, in most of the decks I've seen. I haven't seen this card in the deck in Oh yeah, I don't know like, how long. It really depends on the metagame. Like, it's, this is a metagame card. Like, if you assess that the metagame is running a lot of taunts, you do play Black Knight. But then uh, looking at Firebus hand right now, it's not that great. There, there is only this this Blizzard, some burst. Um, I think this hand's looking fine. I mean, he's got turn nine Alex Straza, and then he's got 17 points of damage to follow that up. I mean, that's he doesn't really need too terribly much. He's gonna eat five points of damage this turn, but then he has multiple ways to stall. I think this hand's looking great. Oh, actually, actually, you're right. Like he has all the combo parts. And the, now, the, the secret is the ice book, right? Yeah. Pl see, playing this ancient lore right here, this could actually end up hurting him too, because. Again, he's not thinking about Alex Traza and 17 points of burst afterwards. He's looking at how do I get this this game rolling. And he's got Zombie Chow and Black Knight and Lotheb in his hand. He wants to hold the Lotheb. Black Knight's not as efficient uh, in terms of options as something like the Ancient Lore is. Well, the thing is that uh, Farbat will play Alex Traza on 9. Then we'll have to see if the block is getting popped. If block is getting popped, and Lothab is getting played. Well, even without Lothab, if there is a way to kill Alex Traza and pop the block, then Firebat is not able to deal 15 points of damage in one turn yet. Yeah. So Firebat needs two turns after playing Alex Traza to seal the game. And, so and there is that right Lothab now. waiting. This this draw right here is so critical to this match. No. Another Ancient Lore that's actually really good. Yeah, that's a great card. And I'm very, I'm, I'm happy to see him hold on to it too. It's, I think playing the first one is actually, you know, it's, it's scary playing the first one. You still want to have access to a heal. So this is an obvious Alexstrasza turn, or is there any other play? Oh well, I mean, I, I bring <laughs> you know what else? Can you, just 15 points of damage, you get an 8-8 on the board. You just want to take it. So now, it's also a big draw. Is there a way to pop the block with? Um, this is nine plus six. Yeah, you could pop it. 15. Yeah, but you want to kill Alexstrasza at the same time. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I don't nine, think you can actually 15, pop it. 19, 20. Oh, he's only got 20 damage, doesn't he? Hmm. 4, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, he's only got 20 damage. I lied to you. So I think, like, right now, Ancient of Lore, uh, BGH, and just go for face. And also, this three points of armor might be important. Like, this is extra oh, yeah. life. Every single point matters. Yeah, but definitely he also has to think about the options. Like, he wants to pop the block, he knows that burst is coming. Like, Alex Straza getting dropped by a Freeze Mage says, Hey, I'm going in. You better prepare. Yeah, this is pretty much the alarm bells. It's, it's really tough for him. Oh, that's weird. Why would he Alex Straza me? I don't... Yeah, it's something like, I haven't seen a, a mage do in uh, such a long time. It's not like Freeze Mage is having, Hey, I would like to have a dragon on board. It's like, it's cool. Uh, dragons are cool. I want to have one. Wow, he I'm actually so chooses to draw off the Wrath and he picks up an Innervate. Why on earth didn't he just play Ancient Allure? He's actually going to Innervate the Emperor here. So he just feels safe at 18. I guess it's really tough for him to die at 18. Let's say it was Blood Mage, Double Frostbolt, Double Ice. So would that be enough? That's eight, 10, that's 18, eight, exactly. Eight. Yeah, but that's uh, highly unlikely, I'd say. Oh, he gets a hero part of this one too. Why did he play Lothip, though? Uh, because he wants to stop the spells. He, but he, is, he wasn't able to pop the block this turn. I feel like... At 19, like, I feel like if he just healed here, he's in much better shape. Yeah, I agree. Like, now just, he doesn't have the low step on the turn he pops But on the other hand, like, with, um... Maybe he thought, like, he can stop the AoE. Like, oh, if, if you play Ancient of Lore, you get Flame Strike and a ping. Oh, uh, well, that's a pretty darn good draw right now. That's pretty sick. You, and it's interesting that he has the space on board. Like, many times it happens that after Frozen Mo Froze Nova, you can't play all the minions. Whoa. He can pop the block now. And a good sequencing, he will... Fireman needs to draw... I think he needs to draw Ice Block. Yeah, he's Ice Block, or he's dead. Yeah. Like, Swipe is going to kill him. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> he actually called Ice Block! Okay. What is... Wait. So Ice Block's for sure getting played. And I guess he's just got to go for it. He's got to put Blood Mage, Frost Bolt, Ice Lance. It's still tough. Like, the Resension of Lore is going to heal. Yeah, I don't think he's got enough damage. 14, 9, 8. Yeah, he's going to go to 13. Fox going to get popped. Does he have an anti heal button here, maybe? Well, uh, he's I, still, he would I would expect, like, Chasm Mystic. Oh, that was an Ice Block. Such an expected turn of events. He knows that there is a possibility of, of a Pyroblast. He has to heal now. 
All right, and this, do it. this is going to seal the game. Firebat, even though he is the Firebat, he's not able to deal enough fire damage with the Pyroblast. Frost Nova is a nice pickup, but there is a swipe waiting. <laughs> swipe or key for the Grove would be enough to do it at this point, too. Wow, what a close one. To me. Well, at least Firebat might draw a card from Akalite. I must safeguard the light. Always do it from the, from the far right side, too. Not Always bad. make them think that you <laughs> top decked it. That's a good way to go. All right, so two games, two now. That's a tie. So exciting. Yeah, that's the end of the match, guys. These guys are going to go on a tie. No one's going to win this one. And no one is advancing. This was a group of three people. <laughs> so right now they are going to rematch everything. Nah, just kidding. So game five is going to get underway now. So, you know, happy to, to get his Druid win. You know, I think it's certainly a matchup that he was looking forward to, his Freeze Mage uh, with his Druid. But now he's got Shaman versus Mage. Oh, man, I'm just thinking, like, What's different about this Shaman? There was a Cult Master. Was there a heal bot? Like, I don't think there was... Is there any healing in the deck? Originally, Shaman was really bad versus mages. Yeah. Um, gosh, I mean, this is going to be a tough one. I think one of the ways that he's going to win this game is just Russia. very heavy early pressure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, having stuff like Flame Tongue Totem, being able to kind of stick stuff early to the board. Early minions. Yeah, get, get underneath, like, a Doomsayer and have it... You know, if a Doomsayer hits the board, you got a couple of different ways to answer. you got Hex, you got Urshock. Maybe you just even have enough damage on the board to keep keep the pressure going. There might be a silver bullet. There might be Kazan Mystic. Like, I've seen uh, players playing Shaman before. They did play Kazan. Like, one Kazan fits in Shaman. If, if Zozo is actually running one, that might be the key card to win this matchup. Yeah, Lothab would also be a really big one, too, if he's got Lothab in his build. Now, we did see Neptalon, and we did see Manatide Totem, and we saw Feral Spirits, and those are all kind of three cards that have been... You play Neptalon at seven, you get the Cold Light's uh, Oracles, and then you burn uh, Freeze, <laughs> Freeze Mage's hand. You basically play the just Fatigue game. Just four Cold Light Oracles, yeah. That's yeah. great. After you have an Emperor Thoris on down, too. Yeah, and you just play those guys, and then they, they burn Alexstrasza, they, they burn Pyroblast, and they're like, I guess I'm done. I think you've just made a new meta. That's what I think. I've seen many different plays last year and this year, and I wouldn't be that surprised to see that. <laughs> But uh, definitely the like aggression route is the, the best route right now. And uh, we're probably going to see Zozo just slamming those zombie chows and going for face from turn one if yeah, he gets them. I would venture to say that aggression's his best chance to win this matchup because it, otherwise, like you said, there's no healing in this deck. You know, it doesn't have like major burst potential. It's It's got a lot of, it's got like, the you know, a good 12 to 13 point of burst, but its pressure early on is just really lacking. You know, it's looking to use stuff like Crackle and Rockbiter Weapon to keep control of the board early on and then utilize its strong mid-game. Um, what do you think about Rogue Biter, Hero, and Go Face? Third just, one. Term, just Dennis it? Yeah, just Dennis it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> make a statement. I think it's probably not the statement he All wants right, to it's be not the making. He wants, Maybe kind of saving it for a surprise instead of just, you know, <laughs> ripping three points of life total right off the top and get going That might there. not really work. But so, aggression is the way, so we support it, and if anybody supports aggression, it's Nimshin the Mirable. And uh, Zozo versus Firebat, well, Farbad will just continue with the standard plan, right? Like, he just wants to draw cards, get Alexstrasza Ice Block. Freeze Mage sort of tries to do the same thing every single time, and I think that's one of the strengths of the deck, because it's consistency in doing so. Just, you know, draw some cards early, keep your life total high as you can, try to get a really big swing turn on the board, uh, then look for big combos at the end. You know, some one of the strongest plays it's got now is because the Emperor Thorson is to something like on turn five, like a Frost Nova Doomsayer, and then dropping an Emperor on a clean board. It's such a powerful play because the Emperor needs to be answered. You typically will have a high, you know, hand count at that point. You just get so much value from it. So game five, we're going to get right into it. And this is match point for these guys. And again, setting the tone here really for this tournament. This is such an important one to win. And Zozus, I think he's got his back against the wall. Oh, man. Well, he got the coin and he oh, got Haunted Creeper, so he has some minions. But then look at the hand from Two Firebat. mad scientists. Like, only minions! This is a Freeze Mage. Are you serious? That's a pretty darn good opening hand. Yeah, he's going to get those secrets. He's going to draw some cards of Acolyte of Pain. If he wants to, he can play a Preventive Doomsayer and Antonidas. Oh, Antonidas is not doing much now, but it's just looking great. Like, look at this Antonidas. Just, hey, I'm surrounded by all those minions. Great. <laughs> This is really interesting. So is those going to continue with the Feral Spirit on free? Um, I like Haunted Creeper, by the way. Oh, he's actually going for Feral Spirit. Yeah. I liked Haunted Creeper because if you play the Creeper, uh, Creeper uh, possibly dies, and then 
If there is an Aquite, you just uh, use Defender Vargas. I'm really okay with this, and the, and the number one reason I am is because he's just looking forward to his turn four play. It's really consistent with what he did last time he was playing Shaman, which was really look to nail a Pilot Shredder on turn four, and I, I think I don't, I totally agree with him here too. I think it's so important that you get it. The totems really aren't going to be that important in this matchup, but something like the extra pressure plus being able to nail your curve, I think, is really important here. We saw Fire Right. He reached for Doomsday. It was the very first thing that he did, and. You, I can really see that being an okay answer here, but this is just two Feral Spirits, and you kind of do have them checked right now. I mean, you have the Mad Scientist, you just got an Accolade of Pain on board. This is a really scary spot now for Zozus. I think, like, Doomsayer is kind of a reflex. Like, you see a board, and then you're like, oh, I played Doomsayer, I cleared this board, and then I stop my opponent from playing minions next turn, but then he realized that Zozus actually has only one point of yeah, mana. Yeah, he doesn't have any mana next turn either. You're trying to buy tempo with Doomsayer, and oh, just not getting any of it here. Yeah, Acolyte is going to ground him cards, and he needs cards. Uh, right now, those minions are not doing much. Uh, Firebat is not going to rush his opponent. A double Blizzard. Actually, this hand is awkward for now. Um, well, I, I, I'm actually a big fan of Double Blizzard. I feel really comfortable, typically, when I have it. Just because you can buy so much time with Blizzards. And especially if he's already got the Acolyte's Pain, and he's got both Mad Scientists. So he's got plenty of time. To get the job done here. It's also like having the small minions, especially if uh, uh, the opponent tries to rush you, is very important in Freeze Mage because you can deal some damage with them, you can control the board with those small minions early, and then you can use your big spells to, for the clears. Far about getting a number. I saw, oh, he's getting two pair. If this would be a, a poker game, he would be actually in a very good spot. Mind if I roll need? Also, filtering your deck um, for another secret might prove useful. Wow, he's actually going to go face here. And I'm curious how much that second Ice Lance affected his decision to stop thinning his deck and start applying pressure. Because when Zozu sees that, he does have to think a little bit about you know being mindful of his own life total. Like how much can he afford to just straight out invest in that sort of position now? I think it's really difficult. Like For Zozu, he knows that he has to be really aggressive in this matchup. That's a lot of burn. What do you think about playing Loot Hoarder? Like, uh, a lot of people st uh, started cutting Loot Hoarder. Well, that's two Loot Hoarders. Yeah, so that's two Loot Hoarders. I can tell you what Firebat thinks of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he likes it. It's an aggressive card. But then, like, when people play Torison and they play Malagos, they do cut the Loot Hoarders. I think Did they you say Malagos? Yeah, I said Maligas. Maligas and Freeze Mage. People do cut like Loot Hoarders, they can cut Pyroblast, and they play Torison and Maligas. And with Maligas, the math changes completely. Like, you do draw a lot of cards in Freeze Mage. Oh, I'm thinking of some math with Maligas. What, the uh, math of Maligas? Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of one less card slot in my deck. <laughs> He's got two Loot Hoarders in here. Um, you know, Antique Healbot's actually something... That's actually a more interesting card, I think, than Maligas. Maligas is kind of cute. I mean, you definitely could... You know, play Emperor with a Malagos in your hand and then Frostbolt Iceland someone. That's funny. What you do is that you play um, Antonidas first, you get a couple of Fireballs, then you play Torius. <laughs> a couple of Fireballs? Yeah, a couple of Fireballs. Like, you know, use Coin, Ice Lances, <laughs> and stuff like that. Then you play Torisan, you get a really cheap Fireballs, and then you slam Malagos, and then, whoa, the burst. Malagos for four, let's say. Because GG, man. You can plow for 50 po points of health. I, I actually do kind of like the idea of, of Malagos with Frostbolt and Icelands, like after you have the Emperor in your hand. Yeah. That's so much stuff you have to draw. I mean, I actually, in slower metagames, if that's something you expected, that, that sounds like a really good option. That's probably a pretty decent way to beat Warrior. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Emperor really gave the Warrior versus Freeze Mage such a different dynamic, too. I mean, that was a match where it was just, I mean, you basically could have just quit and you'd have been fine with it. But now that you have Emperor in there, you actually have to, like, you know, I'm, like, on ladder, I think I'm something like, Eight and ten versus versus control warrior with freeze mage. Yeah, that's uh, that's a really insane score. Like I've seen Powder yesterday playing versus Kroba, the same matchup, and Powder was actually winning mage yeah. versus warrior. But um, coming back to the game, we're going to see this Blizzard. Is uh, Farba didn't attack with the loot quarter? Did he? No, he didn't. Neptulon is going to come. Yeah, I'm down. actually I'm a little bit curious about why he's not attacking with the loot quarter. Maybe he wanted something like that to happen. Well, the thing is, like, if he attacks in the, with the loot quarter, oh he does... Oh, my gosh. Oh, there is a Torison. Whoa. And look at how much damage he's got, too. Yeah, Torison getting being dropped here. And uh, Farbad is super safe with 30 points of health. Oh, he's actually clearing. Uh, he's going to need to pack an awfully big punch. 
Man, you got your work cut out for you, little micro machine. <laughs> micro machine is not doing much, but still, it will be growing. All right, is there any Murlocs here that could be super relevant? Um, Cold Light Oracles to, for the card draw and yeah. for the cards. But then again, Firebot has everything it needs this, right Yeah, now. with this specific context, it's really... Oh, there's a Flame Strike as well. Can you imagine not using Alex Straza here? How much damage is there? Enough. Yeah, it seems enough. It's like 3 plus 8, I bring 11, 12. Uh, he's got 12 directly next turn, so Alex Straza... Uh, Alex isn't the hard part to answer. I mean, so this has got that checked. The I also thing, don't see a way this. for the block to get popped. Yeah, I mean, Keys and Mystic, you know, you mentioned that's a possibility in this deck. It looks to me like he really needs to get something like that. He, I, I mean, he doesn't have enough damage, right? Unless we count this wrong. Drop to 11, he can drop into 9 with the Bluegill Warrior. Yeah, there just doesn't have damage to do it. Yeah, he has the BGH to counter like Straza, but then he will need the Kazan to win. Or like a super heal. Yep, this is tough. Yeah, I'm guessing. Oh, wow. Wait, that that's is exactly 15 mean, points of damage. That's exactly lethal. It's far. Yeah. Yeah. Farbat gets it. <laughs> well, well, I don't think he necessarily needed that draw him again. He's still sitting in an ice block, and a card blast would have been more than enough here. Pretty happy to, to, you know, draw the cards you can to close the game out as soon as possible. Wow, you know, don't 15 want... points of damage in one turn. So yeah. Farbat is going to take the series and advance the top eight already, where Zozos will have to face Kroba again to be able to advance to top eight. Yeah, I mean, gosh, I mean, what a match between these two. Freeze Mage at two tournaments in a row for Firebat now. And I think he's pretty happy to pick up a win here, wasn't he? You know, might have been sweating going into this game five. Again, the last time these guys met, Firebat had a pretty dominant performance over Zozus. But Zozus, you know, I think even despite the fact that he had what I would consider a pretty poor lineup matchup, a pretty good series. I mean, going to game five again with with what I would perceive as, as pretty bad matchups in, in the lineup she two chose to draw. It's good stuff. Uh, yeah, I think it's an amazing start to the Hearthstone Spring Masters too here at Gfinity in London. And uh, I'm really excited to be here and then casting those games with you, uh, Nathan. We're having so much fun. So tell, uh, tell your friends, like, if you're having fun, if you're watching, tell everybody so that they can watch as well and have fun with us. We are going to have an amazing weekend in front of us. A lot of Hearthstone games, great players, great matches. Yeah, a lot of good stuff. So make sure you get out there and tell everyone. Uh, you know, tell, tell all your friends on Twitter. You know, go tell your mom about it. I'm sure she's really interested in Hearthstone too. And she'd probably like to hear from you anyway instead of just being locked away in your room. But anyways, we're going to throw it over to the analyst desk and see what they have to say about it. Over. All right, thank you so much, Nimsh and Admirable. Uh, that wraps up our first series of the day. Firebat taking out Zozus and almost a, a rematch, a, a replica of what we yeah. saw in the last Finney. Pretty closely contested. So what do we think about currently that series? I know, Cali, you had a lot to say, so we'll begin with you. Uh, I think it looked really unfavorable with uh, Dex. Uh, I guess Sosa's lineup with uh, Shaman and and, uh, and Druid and the uh, Machmates, it's all the midmates, I suppose. It's really designed to you know kill Druid and Warrior, and he didn't really have either of those, so he ran into a lot of trouble. He actually had four of the five games were unfavored matchups for Saucers, so that really heavily influenced it. It came, became quite close, but I, I think yeah, the uh, matchup just didn't go his way, this one. So it, yeah. it's, it's a lot of lineup preparation. Is that too, is that, is that what you agree with Lothar, or is there anything else that uh, well, to you? Well, I'm not sure if Firebat was even preparing for a specific opponent. So I think the, the, the lineup that he used was basically his most powerful decks that he has in his arsenal. Mm -hmm. Like, he, lo he loves to play Freeze Mage, Warlock, uh, Zoo deck, it's basically his yeah. trademark, right? And Rogue also, it's one of the most used class in, in his um, choices what's, uh, whenever you see him. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he chose the three classes that were the most popular for him, and that's what he went uh, with. Um, and for Zosus, it's basically... <sighs> Well, the I Shaman is a really, really interesting pick. I know people are saying Shaman is bottom of the totem pole. Why bring it to a tournament like this? Is he trying to catch a specific class off guard? I really like the Shaman, which is the aggressive one. The, the mech, the, the, mech the all in, me yeah, the all in Shaman because it counters so many decks like Druid and Rogue at the same time. And when you think about the Shaman uh, in the mid range version, it's basically only against Druid. And that and warriors, it right? It feels like yeah, the the uh, mid mage, for example, it's like eighty percent win against uh, uh, druid and warrior, and the same for the shaman, I suppose. So 
if you face a druid, which is very really common, I suppose, it's thought to be one of the stronger decks, you will just win almost outright unless something goes, you know, dramatically wrong. So that's maybe his idea. Mm -hmm. Whereas Firebat is thinking, okay, I want to bring three diverse classes, and there's not a lot of lineups that can deal with Freeze Mage, Rogue, and Shu because they all play dramatically differently. So yeah, it, yeah. it was a good point when you brought out the, the Shaman, but the the fact is that now after the Imp Gang boss was released, the, the meta game shifted mm -hmm. like really heavily. We yeah. didn't see Zoo at all. And now it's back. And when you think about Zoo, Zoo matchups are great against Druid and Shamans because if Shaman doesn't draw uh, Storm. Lightning even Storm, then, it, yeah, even then. something back now because Imp Gang Boss and Ruby Nex, there's so many Void more Colors. Void there's color. so many things that just ruin the Lightning Storms. I think Shaman is really unfavored uh, against Zoo. And when you think about the metagame right now, Shaman is really awful. I think the thing to consider is, you know, Crobat for Spring a Warrior. So it would be really strong against Crobat's lineup. And I, I like Shaman myself. I played a lot in the Kimin Pro League. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's when I know the guy that I'm playing against. You know, If I know he favors, you know, I guess, Druid and, 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 uh, and Huntlock and, and I suppose maybe even, you know, the, uh, the Warrior. So against someone, I guess, like Life Coach, it would be, this would be an insane lineup. But in an uh, open tournament, or I guess, you know, uh, you could face five or six different guys, it, it's not as strong, I suppose, because you're eventually just going to run into a deck that doesn't have Druid or, or Warrior or Huntlock, so... Well, you uh, in, in, in this tournament, you would have to send your deck list before the groups were announced. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like, a, like an open tournament. Yeah. So, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, let's talk about moments of the match here. Oh, yeah, we have we had some interesting... We, ha we have a couple of scenarios where we thought... Yeah, it was really interesting, the line that was taken. It ended up working out in favor of some of the players. So I think the first one we want to talk about is turn one. Yeah. Warlock versus <laughs> Druid. Now, that one had a lot of ways you could have played it out uh, in terms of how it ended up maybe uh, panning. But we thought it was really interesting that Firebat chose to go for a Coin Haunted Creeper as opposed to just playing the Flame Imp onto uh, the mm -hmm, board. Mm -hmm. I think the thing to consider there is, you know, you may be a bit afraid of, I suppose, Innovate and uh, the Keeper of the Grove. But the thing is, like, Innovate and Keeper of the Grove is, is always going to be strong, no matter what happens if you're playing Zoo. So you, even though it's a hard counter to the Flame Imp, you can't really play around it, because you, you're going to just get, you know, screwed by it in, in game two or three, as, uh, turn two or three, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, but you already saw the Zombie Chow, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. you know what's going on. If you... If you play the Hunted Creeper with the coin, then the, the Keeper Innervate is still so powerful. You could just silence the Hunted Creeper, trade it with your Zombie Chow, and the board is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And I mean, but I, I, I suppose his idea is, okay, if he has Zombie Chow into Wild Growth, he can't be hero powering on turn two. So I suppose if he has Wild Growth, then it's stronger to go for the Hunter Creeper. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't, it's stronger to go for the Flame Imp. So I guess in general, I would I would like the Flame Imp better, as you know, you don't really have, want to play, be playing around the Innovate Keeper and uh, right. and the Wrath. I suppose is stronger with the Flame Imp, but I mean it's a two mana card for one mana card, so it's a good trade for the shoe. I, I think it was important to keep the coin because your hand was so awful that if you draw something off curve, you can still. Like yes, you know, yeah, yeah, that's that's game boss, yeah. For example. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, yeah, exactly. So I would still go all, every single time. I would still play the uh, flame and turn one, turn two, hunted creeper because then you also push your opponent into if he wants to trade into the hunted creeper with the zombie chow because he has a ref for your flame imp, then he has to hero power and turn three and not play an example shade of next from us. So if he plays shade, your hunted creeper is safe. If he doesn't play shade and hero powers, then he loses his uh, mana efficiency. Another moment that stuck out to us was when Firebat in game number one was trick. Like he was mixing up being really aggressive. Like for example, his opponent would play a pilot shredder. He would play the Drake and attack to face with his yeah. size seven. And then all of a sudden he shifted into trading moment, trading mode. And then he played a South Sea deckhand, which ended up being this thing where he had two oils, no way to actually capitalize on it because his opponent was holding the Ancient of War and he was scared. Uh, you know, talk a little bit about that dynamic there, because it looked a little confusing in terms of what his game plan was. I think uh, a key thing is obviously the mid mace will have you know mirror entities. So Saucy Deccan is excellent against that. He had two oils, so there's this I guess you know late game combo where you go South Sea, you go for the uh, in uh, preparation uh, oil 
another oil and then play flurry and do like 18, 19 damage, clear the board and just, you know, devastate the game. So it's important to say now that he didn't draw the blade flurry at all in the whole game and he right. was like five, five cards, cards left. left. Two yeah. Blade flurries in the yeah. But it, it resulted, I guess, in two turns later on turn nine mm. where he had already dumped the South Sea. So he had a really awkward turn where he couldn't really hit to play into mirror entity and then dig for a blade flurry to clear. So if he'd had that South Sea deck and he could just play the South Sea deck and into the mirror entity and then been better off, I think. All right. Well, uh, you know, still, regardless of those interesting moments that stuck out to us, I think Firebat, like you said, uh, the, the king of preparation, that's what his strength lies. I think he brought really good lineup, and Zosa just mashed up pretty poorly against it overall. I yeah. think overall, yeah. I, I, th I think Firebat made a few mistakes and just played better in this yeah. series, I have to say. And it, it was really unfortunate for Zosa. I, I think he deserves a lot of credit. He d did take two games, I suppose, but into a worse lineup, you know, so taking two games with... That lineup against what Fireball bring, I think, is really impressive. But sure. yeah, I mean, he's not out of it yet. He falls yeah. to the lower bracket. And Firebat, mm -hmm. because uh, again, one of the members of the group's not here, so he goes straight to the round of eight. Uh, did you want to say something a little? Uh, well, I wanted to go back to the shaman for a second yeah. because you didn't agree with the uh, turn two coining out um, spirit wolves, right? Yeah, that yeah. was something you you were heavily disagreeing with it. Yeah, the the, the thing is like you. It's basically five mana. I think if you you lose two mana on the next turn, then you have only one mana left. So because you are overloaded by two, so you ha it's turn three. You have two overloads. So you only have one mana. You basically can't play anything with that. Unless so it's um, lightning bolt, rock yeah. biter weapon, or zombie chow. I, I suppose yeah, but he yeah. didn't he didn't have any of those. So he essentially paid three mana, the coin, which I guess comes from one mana, and then three mana the next turn. So it's in total it's six mana. Or two, two, threes, it and and he had like really, really tempo heavy uh, cards like the Pallid Sphere and the Defender mm -hmm. of Argus, which I think would have been better use, you know. Yeah, but on the other hand, on the other hand, um, if he coins out these Pallid Wolves on turn two, then he can play the Pallid Treasure on turn four, mm -hmm. like with the usual mana curve. It's true, yeah. He takes less damage to face, I suppose, but I, I think in this matchup against Freeze Mate, it's more important the damage you do to the guy because yeah. eventually the uh, uh, Freeze Mate is going to Alex Tvasa. So, I mean, if you're on 25 or 30 when you Alex Tvasa, it's not going to make much difference, I suppose. That's very true. That's very or you true. can just not bring Shaman. <laughs> also, that's, that's, one of the, that's, one of the that's the best Although, call. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, <laughs> maybe ends up being the case where he wins the entire tournament after losing his first series, and Shaman's a big key of it. It's still too early to say. A, a long chain, I suppose, of Warriors and Druids. Right, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm just messing, of course. Mm -hmm. So, uh, guys, we're done with our first series of the day. We're going to have another one coming up. I believe Life Coach is coming up on stream in just That's a second. True. Who is going to be his first opponent? Uh, Bunny Muffin. That's right. Bunny yeah. Muffin all the way from the USA. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to hop into Group C here at Gfinity Spring Masters Cup number two.